Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're going to take a look at the Vertis Custom Plane and probably start a few arguments. So let's have some fun. Let me start off by saying this is not a sponsored video. There is no advertisement into this. This is my own opinion because I have owned this plane now for about six years. And this is my daily driver. And in my opinion, this is the best hand plane ever made. <laughs> okay, yes, I know, I just flipped a whole bunch of triggers out there. And in all honesty, that is an arguable statement, and I'm sure plenty of people will argue. I'm going to go over why I like it here in a little bit, but first let me state, this being my absolute best plane does not mean I'm going to get better shavings out of this than I'm going to get out of any other plane I have. You'll often see me in the shop using my modified Stanley or a simple unmodified Stanley. I can honestly get the exact same shavings I get out of this Veritas custom plane with a simple Harbor Freight 33 junk plane. And if you've ever used one of these, these are probably the worst plane ever made. I know that's another arguable statement, but yes, I could take this Harbor Freight junk plane and I could modify it to get beautiful shavings, and I've done that in other videos. The big difference between a trash plane and a Veritas custom plane is ease of usability. How easy is it to dial this in, to make changes, to change it from one setting to another? And that's really where this shines. The other category you're gonna to wanna to look at is fit and finish. And this is a really nice, well-polished tool that is premium. It is going to be a high-class, clean tool. It's probably not gonna have the fit and finish of a shower and Steiner, but it's not gonna cost several thousand dollars. It's probably not gonna have the fit and finish of a Lee Nielsen, but I would honestly say that it is far more usable than a Lee Nielsen. And yes, I have used Lee Nielsen, Sauer and Steiner and all of the other brands out there. And they are fantastic planes, don't get me wrong. I'm not pushing anyone else down. I'm just saying, for me, that's the top of the pile. So let's take a look at why. Probably the single biggest reason for why is in the name. It is the Vertis custom plane. And when you order this, you're not ordering a stock plane that everyone gets. You're ordering something with a bunch of features. There are several different totes you can choose from. There are several different knobs you can choose from. You can choose different irons in there. You can change the difference of the frog. You have all of these options that you can make a plane that works for you. Or you could even buy replacement parts for them and change it over time so you can very easily modify it with things that are designed to go on this specific plane. The most obvious is the frogs. You can get different angle frogs to fit in here. Something you're gonna find on low angle planes is a movable adjustable mouth. And the reason for that is you can't move the frog back and forth. But if you've ever tried to move a frog on a Stanley plane, you know it's an absolute mess. So Veritas says, okay, let's make an adjustable mouth. And so we have a standard high angle frog that now has an adjustable mouth. Not only that, but there's this little screw in here. This is actually a set screw that stops the mouth from going back. So I can set it to where I want it. And I can use that screw to fine adjust exactly how big I want my mouth to be. So I can make it very, very small, or I can make it fairly large. And I can have a very, very, very fine adjustment on there. Once I get it to where I want, I leave that screw there. And now, when I slide this back, I'm not going to hit the iron with it when the mouth closes, because that screw is stopping it from going back any farther. I get it to where I want, I lock it down, and now my mouth is where it should be, nice and tight, and I get the exact setting I want on it. For taking out to sharpen, we don't have a lever anymore, but we've got the screw down type. I kind of go back and forth on whether or not I like the lever or a screw down, and eh, for me it's kind of 50-50. But this is actually a really nice premium cast piece. I really like how heavy duty this whole thing is. Then we can lift out the iron and chip breaker assembly. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. And underneath here you can see there is a Norris adjuster and the frog. The Norris adjuster can actually wiggle out so you can change the whole frog, and you can put it into the new one. The frog is held in place with two screws, and it's a fairly quick change. Only takes a minute or two to pull it out and put the new one in. Also, when you go back to put it in, there are these little set screws on the sides. On both sides here, there's a set screw that actually will capture the iron. So when the iron goes back in place, it actually fits right back into the exact same spot it was before, captured between those two points. And with a screwdriver, I can micro-adjust exactly where those are to shift the iron side to side. It makes putting it back together after sharpening a lot simpler and a lot faster. You know it's right where you left it. When it comes to Norris adjusters, generally I'm 50-50 on them. Sometimes I like them, sometimes I don't. But this one is very nice. It's incredibly tight. There's almost no slop in this. When you run it forward, you're adjusting it. When you run it back, you're pulling it back. It's really, really nice and tight. Hard fit without anything in here. Lateral adjustment on it is relatively easy. Um, even with it tightened down, this whole thing moves very nicely. It's just, it's a very, very good tight adjustment. I absolutely love this adjuster. 
I'm not a fan of the Norris adjuster on most low angle planes. It's hard to get into and it's absolute pain. But on here, it's a fantastic joy. It's just a really, really well designed adjuster. On the sides, you're going to see these two threaded holes, and this allows you to put a fence on here. You can make your own. I have one where I made a chamfer plane fence that goes on this. You can also just strap a board onto it and put a 90 degree edge on there. Veritas sells others. Having these screws in the side are phenomenal. And I've even seen some old Stanleys where someone's drilled through and tapped in, but you're going to get a pretty thin tap into that thin sidewall. This is actually a relatively deep screw. I can get a nice solid connection. With the old Stanleys, the castings are all the same thickness all the way across the bottom on the cheeks and sidewalls. It's all just a square shape. And that's okay, but stresses change in different ports of the plane. With this, they said, wait a second, we can make this whatever shape we want. And so it's thicker here than it is back here. The sidewalls are thicker at the bottom than they are at the top. All of the measurements and changes are very organic and shaped to be exactly what they need to be, where they need to be. It is a well-designed scientific shape to the plane. Not to mention with the ductile steel, this thing is incredibly strong. I can drop this without any fear of it breaking. Uh, it's an incredibly well-designed and well-made plane. The balance and the feel on this is really nice. All of the weight is centered to the middle because the casting gets thicker at the middle. The frog is a solid piece of metal. All the weight is in the middle, balanced between this. You have very little weight out here. You have very little weight out here. It's all right where the iron is. And that makes it feel really good. Because the body isn't uniform, there's less chance of it actually picking up a vibration because the resonant frequency of the plane changes over the whole distance of it. There are so many things I love about this plane. But there are still a few that I'm like, why did they do that? So I'm going to suggest a few changes to this they could have made, and uh, I'll talk about the few things that I don't like about it. Number one is the hardware. When you take this apart, you're going to find that there's an Allen screw there, an Allen screw there, and then the frogs also have these two Allen screws. Now the nice thing is they're all the exact same Allen screw. They're all a 3 30 seconds Allen screw, and so I can adjust them all with this one screw. The problem is the 3 30 seconds is tiny, and it's very, very easy to overstrip these. And these tiny little heads on the frog, I mean, Yes, that is all the torque you need to actually adjust them, but I would like it if it was ever so slightly larger. If it were one size larger, there'd be less chance of stripping it out, and I would love that. Then we come to the set screws on the side, and you realize, oh my, that's a standard screw, not an Allen. Why didn't they use this exact same 3 32nd Allen that they have everywhere else here? No, they decided to put in a flat screw, and it's a weird one, and I've got to find a small screwdriver that actually fits into that slot. I, I would love if they changed that to the same Allen that they have on everything else. One of the cool things they do have on this is this auto set plate. And so when I take this off to sharpen it, I can take off this little screw here and I can pull off the chip breaker. And this plate is back on here so I can put this chip breaker back exactly where it was before. That makes it a little bit easier for putting things back together. The problem with it is this second screw. This one, the initial one, I ended up stripping it out because it was such a small one and it just, I have never quite felt it was where I wanted it to be. I wish that this was a little more robust or a bigger thread. I do like this auto set feature. I do have to adjust it every five to six times that I actually sharpen the iron, but that's really not that much. And when I do need to adjust it, I just put the chip breaker on there. I loosen it as normal and then I slide my chip breaker around where I want it tighten that down, and now my chip breaker goes back in the same spot every time. So in general, I like the auto set feature on the blade. I just wish this second screw were something different or make them a little larger, something a little stronger. It's just a little fiddly every time I put it back together. And that's one of those things yeah, I would like if this were different. It's one of those reasons why the fit and finish is probably, I would consider it be a little bit better on a Lee Nielsen than on the Veritas, just because of the, the screw sizes and this tiny Allen. Um, I would like that to change, but oh well. But all in all, those downsides really are kind of small in my book. It's not something that I, really is a problem because I've been using it for six years every day and they only come up every now and then. And when I do, it's just kind of like, eh, it's kind of a fiddly thing. Kind of like the depth adjuster on the uh, Lee Nielsen block planes in 62. I love what Reed has done with changing that out. I wish I could find something simpler for these pieces of hardware to make it just a little bit Eh, a little more user-friendly. It really is one of the only planes on the market that is completely redesigned from the ground up. I mean, Lee Nielsen takes standard bedrock planes and makes a few modifications to make them a little better, or maybe making them brass. Uh, Sauer and Steiner makes fantastic planes, but they're basically the same old infills that we've had for hundreds of years. Some might argue bridge city planes, but in reality, they just have holes in the side. They're not that big a difference between other things. With this, it's a whole new casting, a whole new shape, all these other features that have never been put together with on a, 
with the custom plane, it's a whole new, with the custom plane from the ground up, it's different. It's all new castings, all new shapings, putting a bunch of features together that have never been together and really coming out with a fantastic usable plane that I absolutely love. So if you're gonna buy one, what features should you get? Well, on mine, I have a traditional tote. I like the feel of that. I don't like the modern straight tote. I want it to lean forward a little bit. I, I want that comfort in there. I have a tall knob on mine, and honestly, I could go back and forth. Sometimes I like having the short stubby knob, sometimes I like having the tall knob, and I've thought about getting another one of these just so I can play it back and forth. For the iron, I have PMV11. In the tests I've done, PMV11 is absolutely top notch. Uh, though I am gonna be putting out a video here soon um, looking at a couple new irons, so stay tuned for that one. For the frog angle, the standard 45 is what you're gonna want for most everything. This is kind of the, the go-to angle. It works phenomenally and it's, it's everything you need. However, if you're gonna get multiples of these, I would get one really high, 55, maybe 60 degrees, and one really low, like a 30 degree. Because most of the time, that 30 degree is going to perform incredibly well, except for when you get to that weird grain, and then you jump up to the 55 degree and it's really, really happy. I keep my 55 in here because this is my general go-to smoothing plane. It's the one I grab when I've got difficult grain because I keep it set up for really, really clean shavings. But in the end, it's a personal choice because that's why it's a custom plane. You can find the plane that works for you. You can find the pieces that fit your style and the, what you want to hold and how you want to work. And you can make the plane that is designed for you rather than the plane that's designed for everyone. And that very reason right there is why this is the best plane ever made. So what do you think? Have you ever used one? Do you like it? Is there a plane you prefer more? Is there something that I missed on this one? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. If you have any questions, thoughts, ideas, or just want to join the arguments, hop down, comments down below. Thank you. It helps out the video, and I do love seeing those arguments go on because that means I get a better engagement. Oh, stink, I've become one of those people. Oh well. <laughs> Thanks. And if you'd like to take it even farther and help out the channel, think about becoming a patron over here on Patreon. Those are all patrons. They are the ones quite literally keeping the lights on. Also, with members here on YouTube, we can click the little join button down there. We have special perks for both members and patrons. And without you guys, um, we wouldn't be here. And that's why I can say what I want to say about this and I can point out the flaws that I don't like in it as well as the things that I do like because I get to say what I want to say, not what the sponsor wants me to say because you guys provide for that. Thank you. And I hope you like that. I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Old guard, meet the new guard. I guess you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, I guess you can because I put a brass knob on here, I put the depth adjuster, I changed the... I have modified this quite a bit. Maybe you can teach old dogs new tricks.